See, today we will be discussing about another important legislation, right to fair compensation, transparency in land acquisition, rehabilitation and resettlement act 2013. So where this topic comes in the syllabus. So in general studies paper 2, there is one chapter by name government policies and interventions for development. So, this land acquisition, rehabilitation and resettlement act 2013 is one, is one intervention, is one intervention for development, is one intervention for development. So, in the first place, let us consider why we needed a new legislation when we already have a legislation for land acquisition. So, the present land acquisition in India is governed by a colonial law made by the Britishers in 1894, Land Acquisition Act 1894, which came into implementation from 2nd February 1899. So there is something seriously wrong with this law and that is the reason why the government felt a compelling need to come up with the present law. So what is wrong with the present law? And apart from that, recently there were many, there is massive resistance against a developmental project. For example, in Varissa. In Varissa, when Vedanta company tried to do bauxite mining in the Niyamgiri hills, the tribals in the local area have shown resistance. So finally, the Vedanta company has given up the project. And similarly, in the state of same Varissa, uh, tribal people gave resistance to POSCO steel plant. Similarly, in uh, Singur in West Bengal, when Tata Nano Car project was taken up, there also the farmers they have shown resistance for acquiring the land for the same developmental project. Similarly, take Yamuna Expressway. When the land is acquired for Yamuna Expressway, the farmers they, they have shown massive resistance for the developmental project. Like this, for several developmental projects, including the special economic zones, the citizens in this country they are showing massive resistance. Why all this is happening? What's wrong with the present Land Acquisition Act? And why there is a so much of resistance for developmental project? The Land Acquisition Act 1894, so far it was amended 17 times. Even then, even then there is resistance to developmental project. What are the reasons? There are several reasons why the present 1894 Land Acquisition Act is not adequate. One is, the legislation doesn't speak about rehabilitation and resettlement. Wider discretionary powers were given to the collector under this legislation. And apart from that, and apart from that, when the land is acquired for a developmental project, the consent of the project affected people is not being taken. Social impact assessment was not being taken up. As a result, the, pre the present Land Acquisition Act 1894 is not an inclusive legislation. And let us take the experience of India with respect to development. So Walter Fernandez, a noted sociologist associated with the Indian Social Institute in Gohati in Assam, he says that between 1947 and 2004, so far 6 crore people were displaced in the name of development and, uh, to, and a land to the extent of 25 million hectares was acquired in the name of developmental projects, out of which 7 million hectares deals with forest area and another 6 lakh hectares that deals with common property resources. So our experience with the development in the last 5 decades is out of these 6 crore people who were displaced around 1 to 1.5 crore people they belong to tribals and these tribal people they were subjected to more than one displacement that is they were subjected to multiple displacements they were subject to, subjected to multiple displacements out of the people who were displaced by the developmental projects, only one third of the total displaced, they got some kind of rehabilitation and resettlement. The rest of two thirds of the people, they, were, they, they didn't get any compensation or rehabilitation or resettlement, even now. Even now. And apart from that, Jairam Ramesh in his speech on 21st century Maoism, he says that in the last five decades, Land is acquired where it is uh, more than required. That is where hundreds of acres of land is required, thousands of acres of land is 
acquired. So we have acquired land more than what is required. And apart from that, even this acquired land which is taken away from the land losers, this was not put to use without delay. For example, in the state of Jharkhand, in the capital city of Ranchi, there is a movement going on which is called Nagari movement. Nagari movement. This is because the government of India has acquired land for some developmental project in 1959. Even now that land was not put to use. So the people who have lost that land and who were not given adequate compensation, they were demanding the government to, re to compensate them at the present market price. This is the extent to which we have imposed disabilities on the people in this country in the name of development. So in other words, lot of injustice was done to the people when land is acquired for developmental projects. So based on this experience, the citizens in this country, they believe that the developmental projects, they are not going to help them. They don't create prosperity in their lives and they don't improve their livelihood security. On the other hand, they strongly believe that if developmental projects are allowed by giving their lands, their, their lives will become much more miserable their livelihood securities will get threatened. So they don't find any stake in the developmental projects. And this is the experience and that is the reason why there is a lot of resistance for the developmental project. And apart from that, in 2010, in 2010, a judgment of Supreme Court and similarly in 2011, another judgment of Supreme Court, a bench of Supreme Court consisting of Singhvi and Ganguly, they have expressed a grave concern the grave concern with respect to the massive resistance to the developmental projects being witnessed in India and the inaction on the part of the executive branch of government to do something to make the land acquisition process much more inclusive and more, much more attractive to the land losers. Fine? So, this is the context of the background under which this topic assumes importance. And apart from that, Previously, prior to 2011, Government of India thought to introduce two bills in the Parliament, one for amending the Land Acquisition Act 1894 and another for Rehabilitation and Resettlement. But on the recommendations of National Advisory Council, on the recommendations of National Advisory Council, both of the bills were, both of the bills were merged. The reason is, if there are two separate legislations, as is our past experience, the land acquisition may be given importance and the rehabilitation and resettlement part may be ignored. There is a risk that the rehabilitation and resettlement part may be ignored and that's the reason why the National Advisory Council recommended for merging the vote. So, and subsequently, in September 2011, the Minister for Rural Development, Jairam Ramesh, has introduced this land acquisition, rehabilitation and resettlement bill in a September 2011 in the Parliament by merging both of the bills. And uh, this was referred to a Parliamentary Standing Committee on Rural Development headed by Sumitra Mahajan which gave the report in May 2012. And based on the recommendations of the Parliamentary Standing Committee, the bill was made much more, comp much more comprehensive by incorporating many of the valuable recommendations made by the Parliamentary Standing Committee. And subsequently the bill was, subsequently the legislation was passed in a, 2013 and it got the assent of the president in September 2013. So this is the context of the background under which the right to fair compensation, transparency in land acquisition, rehabilitation, resettlement act 2013 has to be discussed.